Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Yeah. Can we give God a hand and have a praise for the Lord? Yeah.
Let's give God some praise in this place.
scripture. Uh, just like this time, acknowledge all the ministers in the house. Glad to have Pastor Fox with us on the pulpit today. Uh, Another more ministers, I just shook a hand and asked me to see who you are. Amen. 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 We thank you all for coming out and support today. Amen. This time we'll have prayer. Um, Deacon Robert Thompson. Church, I want to um, first say this guy is a wonderful guy. And I don't know if y'all know it or not. But he, some of y'all already saw him passing out flyers when y'all came in. And I thought I was going to be here, but a lot of y'all were so excited just like I am. He was passing out flyers, but he's supposed to concentrate on the word. So I took over where he was at. And it's just good to see a lot of y'all out here smiling, a lot of y'all just excited to see the word come forth. And to me, that, that makes my heart feel joy. And then to see the two words that were given were powerful words for this man's first service. Right. So it's, it's no question that God is in it. And I don't know how to say this to you, but God is working on all of us in this adventure that he's going into. I, I know you guys are going to support me. Yeah. And I know I'm not supposed to be up here saying I'm supposed to be free um, praying, so I'm going to shut my mouth. <laughs> and I'm going to give the best prayer that I can give as far as God for to put what he needs in this man's heart, in your heart, and to make sure that you all come together and, and receive his word, not just because he preached it, it's because it's God's word. Amen. So let's go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come to you today. Thank you. Thank you for this journey that your servant is about to walk upon. Lord, give him the, the boldness to speak your word. Lord, give him the courage to walk through whatever it is that you need him to walk through. And Lord, as he goes through it, it's not just him, it's his family too. So Lord, I pray today that his family continue to be his support. The backbone that he needs as he continues his journey. So Lord, as he walk, let the people around him walk with him. Let the people that he speak to increase their faith, Lord, increase him. So Lord, just continue to hold on to all of us in this time, this day, that we can all continue to be a part of you. So Lord, let's grow all together in this spirit, this one spirit that we ought to have. So Lord, let us read let us understand, let us show ourselves approved in your sight. So Lord, thank you. Thank you for all that you have already done for us. The things that we don't even understand that you have done. Just thank you, Lord, thank you. Because without you, there is no us. So Lord, this walk that we have, let us just enjoy it be more conform to you instead of the world. So I pray, Lord, that your protection be over everyone that's in here today. I pray, Lord, that you continue to let them have the most provisions that they can have. Because the word was saying that we can't even imagine what you actually have in store for us. So that's more than any of us can comprehend. So Lord, as you continue to doing for us, just continue to let us walk, let our light shine so that everybody can see that it's you who makes us happy, who fills our heart with joy. So Lord, this, this young man, continue to let him know that he's your servant and he's here to do your will. So Lord, as he come today and bring this word, I pray that it be your word that he brings and not his own. I pray that you give him the strength to stand up and say whatever it is that you ask him to say. So, Lord, keep us all, and I thank you, and I praise you. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Let's 
almost time, y'all. <laughs> to see what the Lord has done and what the Lord is doing through Lance. And I just want to share before introduction is that he's been under my tutors now for quite some time. We shared, we have numerous conversations about the Lord and where we've come from and things we've been through and things we've shared in life. And, and I just discovered him to be a man that is full of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He's on fire for the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a story. Yeah. Yeah. He's got something to him on the inside of him. I'm right there. Just can't keep it to himself. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And I say I love this brother. Amen. I love him in Christ. I love him as a fellow, soon to be fellow co label. Amen. In the ministry. Right. But without further ado, we ask now that the introduction will be made by his, his bride, <laughs> his prince, his queen. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Queen. Queen, his princess. Amen. And his little prince. Amen. Y'all come on for it. Amen. Come on. Listen. Chosen. Amen. 
and you are about to hear one of those chosen. Yes. Right. My love, our ears, heart, mind, and spirit are anxiously awaiting to receive a word of what the Lord has bestowed, has bestowed upon you to bless us with.
He'll take the mess. He'll take the mess. Bind it up and make something out of it. I have an example. I'm going to stick to my side. But God works. God works that God is so amazing this morning. So first and foremost, I want to say good morning. I know y'all are probably saying this afternoon, but we're going to call it morning because guess what? Joy! So I'm going to hang on to that joy. Alright, so look, I'm going to give us a joke this morning. Just to, just to break it up just a little bit because we've got to have a little bit of laughter. A lot of times we make things so serious that we miss out on what God has for us. That we'll go in a path that's not, hold up, God took me back to where I need to be. He'll put us somewhere where we kind of lose focus. And we're so set on everything being exactly right that we miss out on a blessing that God will have for us. For the time that we can so, Miss Joyce. Miss Joyce here? I don't see Miss Joyce. There she go. She got me a book. Not a book, but a bunch of jokes, right? Thank you, Miss Joyce. Um, and I want to give a shout out. Today is my, my big hot show, James Judah Johnson's birthday. Right. So, I want to shout her out. So, this joke. This joke I said before, but I found it in that book. So, I'm, I'm going to use it because I'm good with it. So, there was three ladies. Three old ladies. It was a hundred year old, a ninety-five year old, and a ninety year old. So the one hundred year old was upstairs. She put her foot in the tub. And she hollered downstairs. I don't know if I was getting in or getting out. Come and help me. So the ninety-five year old, she's headed up the steps. She gets halfway up the steps and she stops. She said, Well, I don't know if I'm going up or going down. Somebody help me. The 90 year old in the kitchen, she said, Man, I hope my, my thoughts don't get that bad, not going good. So the 95 year old said, Are you coming? The 90 year old said, I'll be there. I gotta see you at the door. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little laugh for this morning. Just a little laugh for this morning. But look, God has given me a word. He's given me a lot over these couple of weeks. And we're getting a lot over these couple of weeks. He told me to focus on the one he gave me at first. So today I'm coming out of the book of Mark. But before y'all even go to your Bibles, before you go to your Bibles, we're going to talk a little bit about Mark. See, a lot of times when it comes to these books, they don't talk about the author because they want you to focus on Jesus we're talking about. But I thought it would be fitting to talk a little bit about who Mark is. See, Mark was too young to be a disciple. But he was always around. See, he was fascinated with Jesus. And he was a friend of Apostle Peter. See, Mark was hyperactive. The reason I wanted to tell y'all about that, he was hyperactive because if you know me, I'm a little bit hyperactive myself. You know, the Holy Spirit and, and, and whatever else sometimes when I do, and you know I'm a little bit hyper. So, what he would do is, in his reading or his works, the word immediately is represented 41 times because he was always on the go. He was from place to place. He could not sit still. He wanted to be in front of the action. See, Mark is one of the synoptic gospels. Now, you know what the synoptic gospels are? The synoptic gospels are Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They all are similar. So, this passage that I'm going to bring to you today, you can get it from the other passages of Matthew or Luke, but Mark was concise. So that's why I kind of chose him. Plus, he was hyperactive. And so for me, sometimes I look around and I see something and it'll distract me, and then I'm on to something else. So I wanted to share that with you all as to know why I was coming out of this text. See, the subject for today's lesson is invited, but not included. Right. I'm going to say that again. Right. Invited, but not included. How many of us feel that way? How many of us feel that way even here? How often are we amongst those who we love 
but sometimes we don't feel included. All right. All right. Just, just, just a thought here, just a thought. See, sometimes they're friends. For our young people that's here today, you have your friends and whatnot, but sometimes they get in their little cliques and you're included, but you're not invited. Well, you're invited, but you're not included. The same thing can happen here in this place called church. Sometimes we feel as though we are invited in, but are we included? See, the text that I'm coming from today puts none other than our king in this precarious situation. See, before I read God's word, I'm going to set the stage. See, Jesus was with his disciples. They had done numerous murders. He healed the demon-possessed man. He brought a little girl back to life. He healed a woman with an issue of blood that she had over 12 years long. But guess what? Now he was back at home in Jerusalem. Text for today is coming out of Mark 6, verses 1 through 6. And it reads, Y'all can stand to your feet. Alright, and it reads, Then he went out from there and came to his own country. And his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him, that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Or are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. Mm. See, but Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor, except in his own country, among his own relatives, and his own house. Now he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people, healed them, and he was marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went out among the villages in a circuit, can you imagine? Jesus, you all can take a seat. Can you imagine? Jesus. But look, let me bring it, let me bring it to life. That ain't nobody but Lance. That's Geneva's and Billy's boy. <laughs> right off the of Dodge City Road. You might be working at Verizon right now, but I remember when. Mm. See. What they knew was his past. The remember when. Right. See, what folk will do is they'll take that past and they'll use it. Amen. Remember the parties at Richardson's? Y'all know Richardson's. <laughs> Y'all remember the hunt club, you know? Um, so how about the times when, you know, Lance caught a little whiff or something and felt good, maybe had a couple of drinks, whatever. Hey, it's good, but that was my past. All right, all right. So, mm, how many of us got one? I didn't have nobody raised their hand. I was going to raise both of them for you. I take it off. I take it off. See, um, and not such a nice past. I remember some folks would tell me, hey, I want to be like you. And I said, I don't think you're ready. You need track the tires. <laughs> Be better than me. That's right. You know, so sometimes we got to see that. And see, sometimes in life, people, not anyone here, but people that, that we know. Y'all know what I'm talking about. People will use your past right. to keep you where they can use you. That's right. But yes. not promote you yeah. to progress yeah. into God's will. Catch me. People, not nobody here, nobody here, will use your past to keep you where they can use you, but they won't promote you to progress into God's purpose. See, 
Hmm. See, even though Jesus knew the people and the people knew Jesus, he still had to roll out. Because, see, their vision of him was not vital to his victory. Hmm. And he had to roll. Hmm. See, somebody say roll out. Roll out. Oh, we're going to do that again. Somebody say roll out. Roll out. See, they did not just reject someone from the community, but they rejected a king building his father's kingdom. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Mm. And see, when that happens, see, in Matthew 10 and 14, it tells us, Whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, we shall shake off the dust of our feet. I got all my... I got all my, my, my carvers. Now, I put them on. Y'all know sometimes I have to move around. I was telling Reverend Fox, sometimes I might have to run. My running has stopped of where God has me. But guess what? If it comes to that point, sometimes you have to knock the dust okay. off of your feet, which means we cut ties. Mm -hmm. Amen. But see, some of us can't do that. No, no, no. No, no, no. See, we know the people and the people know us, right? They know our past. They know, they know about us. They know who we are. They know us without makeup. They know us without suits. They know us when. Oh, right, so I can't. Right. Hmm. However, our past is an issue for them. But we will continue to stay in bondage over being loyal. You remember when I said that the people will use your past to keep you? Where they can use you but not promote you to progress into God's purpose? Well, see, God will use your past to promote you into progression for his purpose. Right, so, so for somebody who might want to write it down, first be in the past. Say past. Past. All right, in Corinthians 5 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. So promote, say promote. Promote. James 4 and 10 says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Yeah. I think that's a promotion. Yeah. Now, come on, we got one more thing. So remember progress? All right. So say progress. Progress. All right, good stuff. Philippians 1 and 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he has begun a good work, and you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So that's our progression. Okay, so we got one last thing. That's purpose. Somebody say purpose. Purpose. <laughs> so, Psalm 57 and 2. I cry out to God most high. To God who fulfills his purpose for me. Or the purpose of giving God all praise. From where he brought you from and where he is taking you. See, my favorite scripture is Psalm 34 and 1. I shall praise the Lord. At all times, it shall continually be out of my mouth. See, that is my purpose. Everyone has a purpose that's here. Your purpose may be different than my purpose. Yes, indeed, trying to tie it in. See, sometimes what hinders us most is we allow familiarity to keep us from flourishing for God's purpose. And just how Jesus had to roll out from an unhealthy environment, we have to too. We know that this can be tough, but just know, great is the reward that's in heaven. Mm -hmm. So with that, I have a story for you all. I'm going to turn this on, because I'm going I'm to take my walk now. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. All right, so it's a story, right? I'm going to tell you all a story. A story about a boy named Joy. Now, this boy named Joy, before I even say it, I'm going to do this. Joy, Joy. God's great joy, 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 down in my soul, sweet, beautiful. Soccer games. He's able to go to all of these events. Hold up. 
he's still able to go to concerts. So he goes and he sees all um, different, different, I can't read that. Different, different, hmm, got it That's love, y'all. That's love. That's love. <laughs> That's love. You have the um, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. You have all of these, the Isley, New Edition. You have all of that. So Joy is now at all of these events. So he went to some of the games. He's at the basketball games. He sees LeBron James. He sees all of these basketball players. And he's paying attention to the enthusiasm and the energy that's being given to these people. So he's sitting there and he's so excited. He's so excited. So he's sitting there and watching all of this happen. And then he goes to the Rangers game. So we got our own hometown hero. So Tony, in America, in America, you know, he goes crazy. So Joy is sitting there. Joy is watching all of this. And then Joy gets invited to church. Ah, come on, come on. All right, so I'm going to walk to the back. I know I have my mask on. I want to just add something. We gotta make this thing real, right? So, 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 Joy, he's in the door. He's in the door. He's coming in. 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 He's coming He's coming in. He's coming He's coming in. 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 He's
One standing at the door willing to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. To invite him into a relationship that's everlasting. To be eternal. Is there one today? See, we just learned in Sunday school that there are two places you can go, hell or hell. Mm, the prerequisite to enter into his gates is you must accept him. Invite him in as your Lord and Savior. Is there one? Or perhaps you just want to renew your relationship with the Father. Is there one? <clears throat> Father God, with all minds closed, we thank you today. We thank you for a word that you've given us. Father God, the word was to convict me in hopes that someone was going through the same thing. Of being able to know that you invite us and you include us, Father God. But sometimes in the world, they may not do the same. So for that, Father God, we thank you for today, a day that was not promised, a day that was given by you, not the alarm clock. We say thank you, God. We give you all honor. We give you all praise on today. In Jesus' name, the highest name I know, Jesus the Christ, we say amen. Amen. Minutes. 
That's all we need to hear. If you can't get your message across in 20 minutes, we got a problem. So I said, you've been mentored by Reverend Beasley, so I know it'll be less than an hour. <laughs> so um, this is our certificate of license to Lance. It is to certify that Lance T. Jeter, my deacon, Lance T. Jeter, is no longer my deacon as of today, who has given evidence that God has called him into the gospel ministry was licensed to preach the gospel as he may have opportunity and to exercise his gifts in the work of the ministry by St. Stephen's Baptist Church, 29346 Sparta Road, Milton, Virginia, 22514, downtown Sparta. <laughs> On the 10th day of September, 2022, Christina M. Pierce, the clerk, Reverend Jared S. Beasley, our acting pastor for right now, and we want to thank Reverend Beasley for mentoring and bringing away yeah. yeah. well, uh, The only remarks I have is we thank all of you for coming out. We thank you for abiding by our COVID-19 rules, which says mass and social distancing. We are very concerned about our elderly in the church, and we want to make sure that we can bring them back in with confidence and feeling good that nothing would go on. So we want to thank Lance for his message. Again, thank Reverend Beasley. Thank the Jerusalem Choir. Uh, I don't know. When Lance gets out there and starts visiting the other churches, I must Y'all better watch out. <laughs> some of y'all along with him. So. But again, we, we're a family. That's yeah, right. It's all Amen. Right after the service, we do have some um, carry-out plates for you. Just grab a plate, take it with you. We're not using the dining area other than just to pick up your plates. If we run out of plates, I'll tell you what, give me your name and the next time you come. <laughs> Thank God for Pastor Beasley, who I feel has done a marvelous job. Amen. That's what Lance is doing. He's moving. 
from one level of medicine right. to another. Yeah. And Lance is asking for your help. And the way to help him is to support him and add his family. Right. Right. He's a human being just like the rest of us. Right. But we thank God that he's pressing on to, towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Yes. Amen. 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 The good thing is that this is not in for Lent. Jerusalem relationship either. Amen. That's right. That's right. Because he'll still be coming our way. Amen. 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 Same way he's doing our way. There's still work to be done. Amen. 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 All you have heard from today out there, anybody who wants to invite him to your church, you cannot invite him until you talk to Baby or me. <laughs> to see what we had for him, amen. I'm just kidding, Lance is an old man. The Lord's telling me to do, amen. But it's been a truly great day in the Lord, amen. amen. We all can agree to that, right? So let's give God some praise. sits high and looks low. Father God, allow it to nourish our bones so that we can move out of this place and be able to return safely from where we came. In the precious name of Jesus, we all say amen. 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 I guess we're going to get our plates now in the back. Amen.